A note to listeners, the following podcast contains content that may not be suitable for all audiences. Thank you for joining us for this bonus mini-episode of Lisk, Long Island Serial Killer. Jacqueline Gallucci's writing and reporting on Lisk served as a cornerstone for all the information we know today. Without her work, the world may have never recognized those victims as women with names and families, not just escorts or prostitutes. We spoke with Jacqueline about her background and writing process, along with her desire to humanize the victims and why we sometimes struggle to do the same. I'm Jacqueline Gallucci. I'm a freelance reporter, and I used to write for the Long Island Press. The Long Island Expressway, that will take you directly in from the city, and you can drive right out. So it's so easy to just hop on a highway, and you're in another world. You get out to Suffolk County, things are very spread out. It's less crowded. The, the houses are farther apart, not as much traffic. The highways are a little more desolate. And so if you drive right through Nassau and you go into the Suffolk line, it's very easy to blend in and get lost. My father was NYPD, so I grew up with, you know, that service-minded attitude of, let's, you know, help people, let's help the community. So I was kind of following in his footsteps. I originally considered joining the NYPD <laughs> briefly, but I think I'd better serve as a writer than, than a police officer. Growing up, the daughter of an NYPD lieutenant made you a lot more careful because as a kid, you see the good things in humanity, you see the good things everywhere, but you also are from, you get to know the dark side of humanity when your dad's coming home as a police officer every day. My family doesn't always love that I do this just because you're commenting about somebody who's responsible for the deaths of possibly at least 11 women right now and that person's still out there and that's just not a great thought for anybody living on Long Island right now. Um, to know this person could be your neighbor. Oak Beach, this was the, f the site of the former Oak Beach Inn, which isn't there anymore. So there was like a restaurant there, people would hang out. Now it's just a parking lot. So the parking lot is like an overlook and you can see the water. There's a, like a little area with benches. And then to the right and left, there's two communities, which is all the Oak Beach community. And where Shannon disappeared, she was right to the left in the gated community. So one of the first houses right there along the water. When I was covering Megan Waterman's disappearance, I was writing, I always go to the beach to write, and I went to that parking lot, and that's where I was hanging out. And meanwhile, that's where Shannon Gilbert would be, would disappear from very soon after. And when I actually where, one of the places I was writing, I would pull over in Gilgo at the same time, was steps away from where Megan actually was found. And the whole time I was writing those stories, I had my laptop, I'm sitting in the car with the radio on, and never thinking, oh, Megan's a few feet away, because never thinking Megan was dead. She wasn't dead at that point. After Megan was found, I drove there every day on the way to work. And there wasn't a week that went by that I never drove down there because I felt like, you need to remember this. You know, this is when people forget what happened here, because this is a place where people go to have fun. They go to the beach, they go to the air show. They, they're going to have fun, but no one is paying attention really to the women that are there, that, that there's these unsolved crimes. I've had a lot of people say, oh, it's great that you're writing about these missing girls that, that people aren't talking about. It's great that you're putting it out there. Most of them, pretty much all of them came to Long Island, specifically or New York City, because the money. There's money here. They found out if you could do the same work in another state, you wouldn't make as much, but people are willing to pay on Long Island. People are willing to pay in Manhattan. So that was a big draw for them. And I think not everybody expected to stay in this business or even planned on coming in this business, but they had other plans and life happened and they were in a situation where they fell into this, they were lured in. And some people, it, it just, they have children. <laughs> you have to support your children. And especially in the case of Megan, that's why she was here. I remember one quote she said was, no little girls, when they're little, says, when I grow up, I want to be a prostitute. I want to be a sex worker. So these women were victims before they were set out on the street. It might have been their choice physically. They chose to do this, but it's not consensual. There's circumstances, there's reasons they're doing these things. I think the media should just cover sex workers at all, because right now they just don't cover sex workers. And 
Every once in a while, you'll get a police bladder item, but there's no cover stories. And that was the reason we put Megan on the cover of our paper at the time, because someone like her would never get a cover story. And we have this opportunity now to give her a voice and put her on the cover of a paper where she normally never would. And there's just no reason not to. Why, why is that any different? When it comes to sex workers, I don't think people are cruel. I think that it's a natural inclination to try to separate yourself and otherize them and make it seem like, to find a reason why this happened and try to explain something so horrible. I mean, I'm not to hold anything against anybody else, but when a teacher goes missing, when, when your neighbor goes missing, a, a student, everybody cares because it, it's, it's just a sexier story. It's, it's, it could be you. When there's a sex worker missing, people think, oh, oh, that could never happen to me. I don't do that. We like to distance ourselves from scary things and, and say, this could happen to you because you did this and this is what's happened to you. And, and it's kind of victim blaming, but it's a protective mechanism and you're, you're telling yourself, you're, it's a way of comforting yourself. This, this will never happen to me because I won't do that. And you did that and that's why that happened to you. It's a scary thought, but if you were in different circumstances, if something else happened, you know, how do you know you wouldn't have done the same thing? How do you know that this couldn't happen to you? And is their life any less valuable because they did those things? No. So it's just important to remember that they're not that different. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, rate, and review as it helps others find us. And you'll hear from us soon with Lisk, Long Island serial killer, on Wednesday. If you suspect human trafficking, contact the National Human Trafficking Hotline by texting HELP to 233-733.